Hello students, I hope you all are fine and healthy. We are reading chapter number 10 that is respiration in organisms. In our previous video, we have read how the different organisms breathe and respire. Like we read about the earthworms. The earthworm breathes through their wet and thin skin. Their skin is very thin and which remains wet. So the gases can easily pass through their wet and thin skin and their skin is having a large amount of blood vessels. Now the blood that is in the skin, it absorbs the oxygen and carries it to the different cells of the body. Now the different cells use that oxygen for the purpose of respiration. We know that in the aerobic respiration, oxygen is used to break down the food into energy. And when aerobic respiration takes place, the carbon dioxide is formed. Now this carbon dioxide is again brought back by the blood to the skin. And from the skin, it is expelled out of the body of the earthworm. So in the earthworm, the breathing takes place through the thin and moist skin. Now after that, we also read how does the breathing and respiration takes place in the fishes. The fishes are having a special organ that is called gills. So the fishes have gills for breathing. Now these gills are covered with the gill covers. So in the fishes, what they do whenever they want to breathe. So they swallow the water or they take the water in through their mouth and then this water flows over their gills. Now the gills are having a large number of blood vessels. Now the blood that flows in the gills of the fishes, it absorbs the blood, it absorbs the oxygen from that water. Now the gills are not visible to us. Why? Because the gills are covered by the gill covers and the gills in the fishes, they are present on both the sides of their head. Now that oxygen which is absorbed by the blood, it is carried to the different parts of their body and in the different parts of the body that oxygen is used by the cells for getting energy by the process of aerobic respiration. Now, the carbon dioxide that is produced during the aerobic respiration in the cells of the body of fish, that carbon dioxide is again carried back to the gills by the blood. Now that carbon dioxide is removed into the surrounding water or it is expelled in the surrounding water. So it means that in the fishes the breathing takes place with the help of the gills. Now the dolphins and whales they don't have the gills. Instead of gills they are having lungs like we are having lungs. Similarly, the dolphins and the whales, they are having the lungs. So they come to the surface of the water whenever they feel like breathing or whenever they have to breathe. And they take a deep, deep breath and then goes inside the water. So in the similar way, when they want to breathe again, they again come to the surface. That's why the dolphins and the whales, they come to the surface of water again and again just for breathing. Now most of the aquatic animals they are having gills for the breathing. Now do you know how does the frog breathe? Yes, the frog can breathe through its lungs also as well as the moist skin also. We know that the frog leaves in both the land also and in the water also. 
Now in the water, can the frog breathe with the help of lungs? No, it can't because with the help of lungs, we cannot absorb or we cannot get the oxygen that is present in the water or that is dissolved in the water. So for absorb, for breathing in the water, the frogs are breathe through their moist skin. Okay? So they are having both the systems. If they have to breathe in the water, they are in the water, so they will breathe with the help of the moist skin like in the case of the earthworm and when they are on the land so they can breathe with the help of their lungs okay now breathing in the insects now insects like the grasshoppers they are having tiny holes they are having tiny holes which are present on the bottom of their body or we can say which are present on the underside of their body. Now these holes are known as the spiracles. They are known as spiracles. Just like the leaves are having tiny holes on their surface that are known as stomata. Similarly, the holes which are on the surface on the body of the insects that are known as the spiracles. Now the air enters the body of an insect through the tiny holes known as spiracles. Now through the holes the air enters the insect body and inside the insect body there are narrow tubes that are called the tracheal tubes. Now air travels in this tracheal tubes and the blood absorbs the oxygen from the air and then that oxygen is used for the respiration in the cells. Now the carbon dioxide that is produced, it is removed by the cells into the tracheal tubes and from the tracheal tubes that carbon dioxide comes out from the insect's body with the help of the same spiracles. So in the insects, the breathing takes place with the help of the spiracles. Now the blood of the insect, it is not red in color. Do you know why it is not red in color? Because it does not contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the pigment which makes our blood red in color. Due to the hemoglobin, our blood appears red. Just like the chlorophyll in the plant, it makes the leaves of the plant appear green in color. Similarly, the pigment which makes our blood red, it is hemoglobin. Now this hemoglobin is not present in the insect's blood. So, this hemoglobin also helps in the transfer of the oxygen. It transports the oxygen. Now when the insect's blood is not having the hemoglobin, so their blood cannot transport the oxygen. So every part of the insect body, it gets the oxygen through the thin and narrow tubes that are called the tracheal tubes. Now just like the human beings and the other living organisms, the plants also respire. So we will learn about the respiration in plants. Respiration in plants. Now we know that the plants make their food in the presence of the sunlight using the carbon dioxide and water. So plants prepare the food in the presence of sunlight, in presence of sunlight using carbon dioxide and water. So do you remember which pigment is essential for making the food? Yes. The chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the 
green pigment chlorophyll is the green pigment which is present in the leaves and it is essential for making the food only the green leaves of the plant they can make the food now the plants make the food does they also need to respire yes they also need to respire because the plants also need energy plants also need energy now the plants carry out the photosynthesis they carry out the photosynthesis or we can say that they prepare their own food only in the day time prepare their food only day time only in the day time when the sunlight is available when the sunlight is available but they need energy all the time so they respire all the time whether it is day time or it is night time so respiration in the plants it takes place all the time takes place all the time now in the plants all the body parts can respire independently in the plants all the body parts can respire independently what does it means it means that all the body parts can take the oxygen or take the air by their own and they can do respiration and then give out the carbon dioxide now respiration in the plants it takes place in two places first is respiration in leaves first is respiration in leaves second is respiration in roots second is respiration in roots now we know that the leaves of the plants they are having tiny pores on their surface they are having tiny pores or we can say the small pores on their surface and do you remember what these pores are known as yes these pores are known as the stomata they are known as stomata now the air in the leaves or we can say the oxygen from the air enters the leaves of the plants through this stomata and then that air reaches all the cells of the plant leaves now in the cells that oxygen is used for the respiration in the cells that oxygen is used for respiration so in the uh, plant cells which type of respiration takes place yes aerobic respiration takes place now the carbon dioxide that is produced it is again brought back to the stomata and from that same stomata it is expelled out or it is removed from the leaves so we can say that in the leaves of the plants the respiration takes place with the help of the no so we can say that in the leaves of the plants the exchange of the gases during the process of respiration takes place through the tiny pores that are known as the stomata now exchange of which gases takes place exchange of oxygen and the carbon dioxide now the roots of the plants they are present under the soil but these roots also need energy so they also need to respire so what happens the roots of the plants they are having tiny hairs present on them that are known as the root hairs suppose this is the roots of the plants this is the roots of the plants that are present 
under the soil. Now these roots are having tiny hairs or thin hairs which are present on them and these hairs are known as the root hair. Now we know that the oxygen or the air is present. Air is present between the soil particles. It is present between soil particles. Present between soil particles. That we read in the chapter soil also. That air is present between the soil particles. Now the root hairs absorbs the oxygen that is present between the soil particles and this oxygen is then used by the cells that are present in the roots of the plant and they carry out the respiration and the carbon dioxide that is produced it is again expelled out or it is removed with the help of the root hairs. Now, if a potted plant, if a potted plant, potted plant means the plant which grows in a pot, if it is over watered, if it is over watered means we water it, we give a large amount of water to that potted plant for a long time. So, in that case, what will happen? The potted plant will die. It will die. Why it will die? Because a large amount of water when we when will be poured in the potted plant. So what will happen? It will remove all the oxygen, or we can say it will remove all the air that is present between the soil particles. It will remove all the Air. Now, if there will be no air, it means there is no oxygen. Now, in that case, the plant will carry out anaerobic respiration. It will carry out anaerobic respiration. Now, when the plant will carry out anaerobic respiration, so what will happen? The alcohol will be produced. In the plant, alcohol will be produced. Now due to which it may die. If the same situation will be there, the plant will remain over watered for a long time then it may die because of the formation of the alcohol. So in the plants, the respiration, all the parts of the body respire independently like the leaves respire independently and the roots respire independently. Now, in the leaves, what happens? They absorb the oxygen with the help of the stomata and the roots, they absorb the oxygen with the help of the root hairs. So, that's it students. Now, our chapter is over. We will revise the next chapter in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.